Houston, we have a solution. What is it? Stick with me and I'll share it with you. Welcome to this episode of Design Talk by DIY3DTech.com. In this episode, I want to share this with you guys. So in a prior video, I was messing around with printing the Apollo astronaut, which was designed to be printed upside down. I'll put a link to that video up here in the corner if you haven't seen it. As I was mentioning in that video, I was wondering if there are other opportunities to print things in unique orientations to make them more successful. And so I was out on Instagram the other day. I saw a make by Winston Moy who actually uh, created one of these or took this STL model from Thingiverse and on the pocket CNC machined it out. So I thought that would be a cool one to give a try in a unique printing position. Now one might think that printing it in a standard position with the bottom you know down on the bed and supports for some of these protrusions up top would be the best way to go well not quite so what am i talking about tell you what let's jump into cura for a minute and i will show you okay we've jumped into the computer we have the dragon 2 uh, model loaded into cura i've scaled it up a little bit it's sitting here on the bed of the monoprice mini delta and what i want to do now is i've already sliced it with tree supports over here so let's go ahead and take a look at the preview of this now one of the things to notice all these uh tree branches here for a very minor support because again let's jump back and we'll take a look at it. So see this support, this little small area of support here. Look at all the tree branches that this thing is forming. And again, if we look a little bit more detail at the whole model, as we pull this down, you can really see the tree branches down here coming up. Again, for a very small overhang, it's creating these. The other thing I want to call your attention to is the center structure, which is rather interesting, the way it's handling this, because as it goes up, you can see the inner bond bottom tapers and this piece comes up at an angle to meet it so I thought that was rather interesting however as we have this here again we have a bunch of tree supports because again if I spin this guy around and it takes a little bit to spin it because there's a lot of math here a again you can see this little tiny area up here is generating all these tree supports for support which is kind of crazy so what if we take this model and now turn it upside down so let's go ahead and do that let's jump into prepare once again and then what we're going to do is we're going to take this and we're just going to rotate this by 180 degrees and we're going to set the capsule on its nose like this now I'm going to leave the same settings over here under tree support and I'm gonna go ahead and slice it now this could take a little bit on your computer to slice this all right so we finished slicing and so let's go into preview and take a look at what we have so as we render the preview now notice something very interesting we really only have one tree branch here now for support coming up here to support a very very small overhang so this is uh, actually pretty interesting now one of the challenges I had notice I have a brim down here to hold it so it's being held a rather very large object being held by a very small area this is another piece of the challenge because again this weight is being distributed across the surface area of this brim so one of the things that I am going to recommend in doing this is extending the brim okay so as I mentioned I've gone into brim and I have now increased the brim size to 25 millimeters so I've got about a good inch here uh, covering the base as you remember before we jumped into the computer the uh, base for the failed rocket or capsule uh, was actually two discs that were interjoined here so I think this will hold a lot better and the other thing I'm going to do is kick up the printing temperature a little bit and hopefully this time will be the charm so anyways let's go back to the bench and let's see what we got okay so in Kira we showed all the supports that would have been required to print this standing up and basically just this one support 
to print it standing up like this. Now, in full disclosure, I might have actually in, even been able to print this without the support because what it's holding up is this little inverted vent here, which is really tiny. That might have actually printed inverted. Uh, there's another piece down here. There's like three pieces it's holding. Uh, but as you can see, the fins came out very well, and we didn't need all that support required for all this ducting. And the quality of the print really is super nice. Now, I really didn't even try for super nice, just nice. Now, I did use adaptive layering, as you saw in Cura with this, just kind of make it go a little bit faster and to see how it would do. Um, you know, if I went with probably 0.2 throughout, it would have uh, came out even better. And there are a couple more tweaks, but again, for what I've done and the time invested, this really has come out nice. So big thumbs up to this. So what have we learned out of this? Uh, number one, if you're going to print in a strange orientation such as this, go with a little bit larger brim, maybe even a raft. I hate rafts, so I stay away from them. But the one failure point with here uh, that I did do is you can see the brim is very small here. And the other thing is I ran the heat at a normal temperature up here. So that's the other piece. Turn up the temperature a little bit to reduce the drag on your object because more than likely your object is going to have a lower contact point uh, than normal. So again, if this sits like this and this sits, sits like this, which is going to have the higher contact point. Now, it's not that this has to handle this the way, but it has to maintain it to the bed and it was very easy as you can see in the corner for this to pull up from the bed. Whereas with the larger brim, it really wasn't and it stayed attached to the bed. Also with the higher print end temperature, hot end temperature, uh, it didn't pull as much because you can actually right in here even see where it started to, to get a little bit too cold. Now, if my shop was a little bit warmer, it is winter here in Michigan and the heat's not turned up that far in here. It, you know, it might have worked at that temperature, but I think the a little bit, a few extra degrees um, helps out. And so those are the big things. So give it a shot. You know, have you printed uh, things in unusual positions? You know, since I shared the Apollo astronaut with you guys, are you going to print things in unusual positions such as this? I'm going to continue my experimentation. I'm going to share it with you guys. But so far, I've been real happy with this idea. Um, also, I've been really messing around with tree supports in Cura to kind of fine tune them. And, and I've been having a bit more luck fine tuning them than allowing just the regular settings to uh, you know be applied. So anyways, found this interesting. Definitely give it a big thumbs up. Swag Shop's gonna be up in the corner. Again, subscribe over there. And we'll see you guys in the next video after you comment below about what you think about printing upside down. Cheers. Please click like below and subscribe to the channel to keep up to date on all of our projects.